If the master vendor celebrated Israel, then I believe he celebrates you. Yes. He celebrates you by becoming all that he has labored for you to become. He celebrates you because you have become yeah. all that he has labored for you yeah. to become. When you win, he wins. Yeah. Yes, sir. The Bible said that God is so interested in you being fruitful that it pleases him that you bring forth much fruit. Come on, come on. So shall you be my disciples. Let's talk about the historic feasts and parties of ancient Israel and understand that the harvest seasons were huge events, not just work events. They were moments of elaborate celebrations and people would come from miles and miles around to appreciate what God had done because they so recognized that the harvest was at the mercy of God sending the rain. And the big parties that they would have would last for days and days and days because they had experienced drought. And nothing causes you to enjoy harvest like having experienced drought. It gives you a spirit of gratitude and appreciation. If you've never been through a drought, you'll think you did it because of your own goodness. But once you've been in a drought, you know that you're at the mercy of the Lord. Wow. Yes. Usually representing a key moment in Jewish history was symbolic of the fact that we are dependent upon God to meet every need. Our harvest depends on him. Our increase depends on him. Our growth depends on him. Our promotions depend on him. Our businesses depend on him. The health of our children depend on him. Our livelihood. And so we give him the glory. And particularly in Israel, these were robust parties. Huge celebration. A ma the master venter is celebrating you as well. He's celebrating you. He's got a plan for your life. You're not an afterthought. You're not an accident. You're not an incident. He has a plan for you. So imagine the collaborative effort of God celebrating his children while they're celebrating him. Yeah. It's much like praise and worship right. that we can praise until God turns around on his throne. Yes, sir. Dance till God dances with you. That's a celebration. In Israel, they had seven different kinds of feasts. And I just want to name them quickly so that, you, so that you might know them and remember them. You got the Feast of the Passover. You got the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You got the Feast of First Fruits. You've got the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost. Rosh Hashan, which is the Feast of Trumpets. The Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. The Feast of Tabernacles. All of these feasts point to different attributes and aspects of their faith and their trust and their collaborative living with God. It is no incident that the first miracle that we see Jesus do occurs at a party. After John 1, 1 and talking about in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God and the word was God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Now there was a man who was sent from God. His name was John. Yes. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light, yes. saying there is one coming after me who's mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to latch it. I will indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And finally, at 114, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Yes. And we beheld the wonder of his glory that only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word was made flesh. The abstract was made concrete. The invisible was made visible. The intangible was now touchable. Christ materialized, matter materialized. And we beheld the wonder of his glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, just so that he could hang out with you. They talk about that in John 1.1, 1, 1, and the moment they get through telling you that Jesus is God in 1.1, 1, 1, by the time you turn the page to chapter 2, he's at a party. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You would think that after you got through going through all of this elaborate introduction to teach me that Jesus, the word was made flesh, that Jesus is God, that he would go out and do some God stuff. Yeah. But John 2, he's at a party. Hey, what's up? Yeah. 
He chilling. He's at a party with his disciples. Yes. And the biggest problem he solves is not a withered hand. Mm -hmm. It's not leprosy. It's not a woman with the issue of blood. It's that they run out of wine. Yes. And all of a sudden he solves the problem by taking the mundane waters of Cana and turning it into the blissful, powerful, mm. fragrant yeah, wine of a wedding whose guests were so appalled <laughs> that they said, you have saved the best wine for last. Come on. Wow. How do you celebrate God? Mm. How do you celebrate God fulfilling his promise? Mm -hmm. Now that we know that God can be holy in one and party in two, how do you celebrate God? All I have to do is remember the times when I had no electricity or no running water, then look back over my life and see where God has brought me from, and I celebrate God. I honor Him and I worship Him, I appreciate Him, and I know I didn't get here by myself. I know I didn't deserve to be where I am. To God be the glory for the things He's done. I wonder, did God also celebrate Israel during these feasts in the same sort of way, just like a parent celebrates the accomplishments of their children? Often the giver, the parent, receives as much joy in the giving as the child does, sometimes more. In Matthew 25, it talks about a very interesting story where Jesus in a parable talks about the talents that he has given out to various ones of his servants. And to one he gave five, and to one he gave two, and to one he gave one. Each with the expectation that you would do something with what he gave you. Because that's really what life is all about, doing something with what God gives you. The master leaves the three servants in charge of the possessions that he has placed to their hands. Now bear in mind, the servants are now in charge. I don't want you to miss that that these people who were subservient are now in leadership. Yes. That they have been moved into a position so powerful that now they're accountable to the owner himself. Wow. I just want to stop a minute and praise him for that. Yeah. 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 How you can be a slave one minute and the master the next, on, that, that's kind of good stuff to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, things can turn them in. That's, a, that's why you have to be careful how you treat people because the person you met down might end up up and the person who's up might end up down. You never know how it's going to go. When he returns, he awards the servants who produced more with what he had. The servant who buried his talent, everything he had was taken away from him. If the master venter celebrated Israel, then I believe he celebrates you. He celebrates you by becoming all that he has labored for you to become. He celebrates you because you have become yeah. all that he has labored for you yeah. to become. When you win, he wins. Yeah. Yes, sir. The Bible said that God is so interested in you being fruitful that it pleases him that you bring forth much fruit. Come on, come on. So shall you be my disciples. As you move beyond your crushing, and fermenting, God sets the table for his royal wine tasting. This celebration is a celebration for all of eternity. Yes. To understand that everything that God has laid out on the table, he has done it without hiding it, even from your haters. Wow. He has done it openly and publicly, and that he is not ashamed of the journey he took you through. So sit back and take the white napkin and put it in your collar, if you please, and allow the very angels themselves to pour you the first glass of success and enjoy the nectar that comes from obeying him and recognizing that he doeth all things well. There are some places in God that are reserved only for those that he chooses. Mm -hmm. wow. He that dwelleth in the secret place, secret oh, place right. of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There are some places that God will take you into that are only a celebration of your intimacy with him. Yes. That only you and he alone can enjoy. Yes. The inner sanctum, yes. 
My favorite scripture in the Bible, Psalms 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. And though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Yes, sir. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that yeah. will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the yeah. days of my life, all the days of my life, yeah. to behold the beauty of the Lord yeah. Yeah. and to inquire in his temple. Mm -hmm. Check this out. For in the time of trouble, yeah. he shall hide me yeah. in his tabernacle. Yeah. Yeah. In the secret of his provision shall he hide me. He shall set me up on a rock. Mm -hmm. Now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round about me, and I will sing, yea, I will sing praises mm -hmm. unto my God. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. For when thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Yes, Lord. This is the hope of every believer to have that communion, yes. that koinonia, that fellowship, yes. that covenant, that closeness, that intimacy where you and God and God and you and you and God and God and you and God and you and you and God and you and God alone can enter into that place of intimacy, yeah, yeah. intimacy. It's well, so wonderful to be in a place with him, to be around somebody with whom you have nothing to hide. The Bible said all things are naked before him with whom we have to do. There's nothing about you that he doesn't know. Not just what you did, but what you think, what you thought, what ran through your mind, what you would have done, what you could have done, what you're capable of doing, what you dreamed about, what you think about. All things are naked before him. So there is no need to be pretentious, important, self-righteous, spectacular, impressive. You can be your authentic self because he already knows who you are. And what makes it even better than that? You are accepted in the beloved. You are, you are accepted in the beloved because your life is hid in Christ with God. When you come before God, you come before God in Christ. Yes. In him I live, in him I move, in him I have my being. Come on. If anybody, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All yeah. things are passed away, all things are passed away, and all things have become new. Why? Because of my position, not my condition. Yes. That's right. My condition is a work in process, but my position is complete. Yes. It is finished, it is total, it is done, it is absolute. I'm already in the holies of holies. Yes. I got the hookup. I'm straight in the presence of God. That's why when Jesus died on the cross, a veil was rent from the top to the bottom so that I would have no restrictions. That's why Hebrews says that I can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. There is nothing restricting me from being able to access him anytime, any place, at any time, at any moment in my life. I don't have to be in a sanctuary. I don't have to be in a pulpit. I don't have to be in a choir stand. I don't have to put on a certain outfit. I don't have to wear anything special. I can access him in my shower. I can access him in my bathtub. I can access him on my way to work. I can access him because he has taken me through the process that brought me to a place that I am the wine at the table of shoe bread. I am the smell of burning incense in the holies of holies. I am the pot of manna that did not ferment. I am the wood that he covered with gold. I am the sheepskins that surround the tabernacle. Wow. I am the bowls and vows that are in the most holy place. Only because I am in him. Only because I am in him. Only because I stood with him in the crushing. He said, if you suffer with me, you will reign with me. If you go down with me, you'll come up with me. If you are buried in the likeness of my death, you shall be in the likeness of my resurrection. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? The pain only lasts for a season and then it's over. 
<laughs> the joy lasts for a lifetime. Right. Take heart, my friend. Have hope. Be filled with trust. God is working in you to transform and prepare you for this eternal feast. And if you think we're partying over here, <laughs> you just wait till we get over there. You just wait. You just wait. You just wait till the trumpet sounds and the skies roll back and the clouds move out of our way and the angels bow and welcome us into the eternal presence of God. Everything that we have taught on this side is only the pattern of the dress. It is not the dress itself. We are wearing a pattern, but when we get there, we're gonna put on the real thing, the real feast, the real celebration. That's why Jesus said, I will drink no more wine until I drink it new with you in the kingdom of our God. So save the best drink for last. There are moments and times that the enemy would come in my ear and sit on my shoulder and whisper audibly almost so much that I could discern his voice itself in trying to convince me that because of something that I'm going through or facing or feeling or thinking, maybe I am not blessed. Maybe I'm not blessed because I've still got a mountain to bring down, a valley to forge, a river to cross, a problem to solve, a weakness to overcome. Maybe I'm not blessed because I've got a problem in my family or my finances or my job or my situation. Maybe I'm not blessed because I gained too much weight or lost too much weight or didn't do something that I had set up as a goal for me to do. And then I had to remind him that I am not blessed because of what is on me. I am blessed because of what is in me. I am blessed no matter where I go. I am blessed no matter what I wear. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed in my going in. I am blessed in my coming out. I am blessed in my uprising and I am blessed in my down setting. If I don't do nothing but sit here, I sit here blessed. If I stand here, I stand here blessed. I have been blessed with these feeble lips of clay and these human hands I hold and these clay toes that are in these shoes. I have been blessed to see drug dealers turn into deacons. I have been blessed to see winos turn into choir members. I have been blessed to see convicts turn into converts. I have been blessed to see the power of the gospel change deadbeat dads into responsible fathers. I have been blessed to see people go back to school and get their GED and continue to get their PhD. I have been blessed to see the downtrodden uplifted. I have been blessed to see homeless people buy their first house. I have been blessed to see families reconcile. And I have performed weddings for people who had divorced and walked away and decided to come back together again. I have seen God do the impossible. I have seen God do the amazing. I have seen him do the spectacular. I have seen him do the supernatural. Through these humble eyes and these weary, feeble lips, I have seen God move mountains too big for me to climb. And you cannot tell me that I am not blessed. Because what makes me blessed is that I have access to him. Anytime, anywhere, any place that I can come before the king without ceremony, ritual, or routine, that I need not change my garment or shave my face or go through any kind of ritual or routine that I am accepted in the beloved and I can come into his presence and access is granted because I got it like that with God. And you got it like that with God. You got a relationship with God like that. Jesus took for us what we would never be able to handle on our own. He took our griefs, he carried our sorrows, he took our weaknesses, he took away our excuses. But the master was not content with just saving us. No, he wishes us to be like him. Mm 
He desires to refine and transform yes. us. Yes. And every little step I take, mm -hmm. every little step I take, mm -hmm. I'm inching a little bit closer yeah. yes. to being like Jesus. Every little mm -hmm. step that I take, I can see his nature coming out in me, wow. even when I don't want it to, <laughs> even when I want to stay mad, even when I want to hold a grudge, even when I want to get even. I see little pieces of Jesus showing up in my speech because he is carnate in my own humanity. He is realized in my own personality, and it is because of him that I rejoice in the crushing. I celebrate the crushing because I'd have no hope to be his glass of wine and be held in his hand if I had not been his grape and been crushed by his feet. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.